Thank you, Samantha, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, the United States Supreme Court has overruled the uh, Roe and uh, Casey decisions in the um, case of Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. It, it overruled those decisions, establishing um, a federal constitutional right to have an abortion. Today's decision restores to the states the authority to regulate and um, prohibit abortion. Um, Tennesseans, a few years ago, you may recall in 2014, uh, amended the state constitution to say that um, there is no right to an abortion under the Tennessee state constitution and that that issue is left up to the legislature, up to the General Assembly which is basically the ruling of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court today that it, uh, that issue is now going to come to the states. Now, uh, as a result of the ruling it, and its uh, application specifically to Tennessee, um, I will quickly uh, notify the Tennessee Code Commission uh, that Roe and Casey have been overruled. Uh, that is required by statute um, uh, that has been adopted by the General Assembly. We will do that quickly, as I said. We have also filed a, an emergency motion with the Sixth Circuit. There, there's a case uh, in front of the Sixth Circuit that we have been involved with for a number of years, challenging a 2019 uh, law. Um, and we are going to request that uh, the injunction um, in that case um, uh, be lifted. Uh, it involved a number of, of issues. Uh, one was a 48-hour waiting period, which we did win on that. Uh, there's a second uh, 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 issue on what we call the anti-discrimination provisions, which prohibits abortions when the physician knows that the abortion is being obtained um, uh, on the basis of discrimination, race, sex, or uh, Down syndrome diagnosis. Um, those provisions are not enjoined at this point. The timing provisions, however, uh, of when an abortion can be um, uh, obtained or rendered uh, is, is enjoined at this point, and that's uh, the reason for our emergency motion that we, that we have filed with the, uh, the Sixth Circuit, and uh, we anticipate them hearing that, uh, that quickly. Uh, to, to, to state the obvious, uh, Dobbs is a momentous decision. Um, you know, our republic is founded on the rule of law, um, and um, we accord um, respect uh, to uh, the supremacy clause, to the um, rulings of the U.S. Supreme Court uh, when they are issues that agree with the laws of the state of Tennessee, which um, largely um, uh, is the case in this instance. Um, but we also follow the rule of law when it's not. and. Uh, I was here in 2015 basically saying the same thing about the Ober Obergefell decision um, and the Tanco uh, Tennessee decision. Um, and those decisions uh, did not agree with the um, view of, of most Tennesseans and the, um, and the statute that we had in place. But in both the, this instance and that instance, the Supreme Court has ruled, and we are a republic. Uh, founded on the rule of law, and we're going to and we respect that. Um, but more importantly, um, after nearly 50 years, this, this today's decision uh, sends it back down to the to the state, to the people of Tennessee, to decide this uh, this issue uh, where it should be. In my opinion, uh, this is a pro an issue of the, call, the court called a profound moral issue. And the policy discussions and, and issues are best served uh, at the state level, um, uh, in our opinion, and um, it's uh, that's where it will be. Uh, and so the um, the people of Tennessee, for the first time in 50 years, will have a chance to uh, weigh in on this issue through their elected representatives. Um, that's all I have to, to say, but I'm happy to. Um, to try and answer any questions that you may have, may have for a while. I think the one woman behind you had the first one. The National District Attorney has said that he will not prosecute doctors or women seeking abortions under this Tennessee law. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think that's a good idea? 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 Do you think
you have any response to that statement? Well, I would encourage him to look at the oath that he took for office. That's the only response I would have. If he does, in fact, not prosecute when there are doctors that are performing or having abortions in Davidson County, do you plan to step in? You know, I don't know that we've reached that point. Today, the decision has come down, so I'm not in a position to answer that. Is there anything in Tennessee law, or anything as a result of this decision, that would prohibit people from going to, women from going to other states, or having groups take women to other states to obtain an abortion? I'm not aware of anything, Andy. Interestingly, that was addressed in Judge Kavanaugh's concurrence. You might want to look at that. I'm sorry, Judge Kavanaugh? Yeah, Judge Kavanaugh actually addressed that particular issue in his concurrence. I've got a question about your injunction, or you asking them to stop the injunction for the fetal heartbeat law. Does the court have to take that up in any sort of timely manner, or does that have to happen today, or will it be like next week, or do they kind of have discretion on when they can discuss that? They have discretion, and that's before the entire Sixth Circuit, so it's the en banc court. It's not the three-judge panel. And we have actually been in touch with them, and we anticipate that that will happen quickly. But we filed our motion. I'm sure that the opposing party will have a chance to respond, and that we will, and then we will, I think, have a chance to respond to their response. And in the case that you lift the injunction, would that law take effect immediately? Yes, it would, in the meantime, because the law, the Tennessee Human Rights, excuse me, the Human Life Protection Act in Tennessee won't take effect until 30 days after the judgment comes down. Is there any concern that pursuing two separate pathways to a widespread abortion ban is going to cause any confusion or harm to the parties who are trying to determine what is not legal and what is not legal? There may be a little bit of confusion in the interim, but we think it will be pretty clear after that. You're going to notify the Tennessee Code Commission that there was an issue that were overruled quickly, but you haven't done that yet? It just came down today, so we're going to do it quickly, as soon as we can. Today? As soon as we can. And we've got a couple of things that we need to look at to be sure it comports with the statute, but I would anticipate today or tomorrow, today or Monday. And then 30 days after that, the law would come into effect? 30 days after the judgment is issued is what the statute says. The judgment of the Supreme Court. One of the lawmakers characterized your filing of the motion today as the equivalent of spiking a political football, and the timing of it as asking the court to make a decision before the press conference as, quote, slap. Any response to that? No, not really. I mean, we're charged with representing the state. The state is enforcing its laws, and I think the timing of things would be certainly in order. Just so I'm clear, 30 days after the Supreme Court decision, you're going to file a motion asking the court to notify the Supreme Court. Correct. Yeah. So how does the trigger law and the law that is currently tied up with the Sixth Circuit interact with each other? Doesn't the trigger law, isn't that more strict than the one that is currently the six-week heartbeat law? Well, I guess that would be a point of controversy, but it's not. It's going to be pretty clear once that 30-day period expires because that is the law that will take effect. Okay. So you're hoping to have the law that is currently tied up take effect before that 30-day window? Correct. Correct. Which law? The timing provisions that we've got before the Sixth Circuit. Yes, ma'am. But the fetal heartbeat has nothing to do with the Sixth Circuit, right? 
Yeah, it does. It does. Yes, that's that is. It, the timing provisions that I'm referring to are the fetal heartbeat in six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, up to. So. And a woman or a provider, um, you know, is going to I don't think the, the woman the woman would not be the subject of the prosecution it would be the physician the and what penalties would the physician well it would depend on what law is applicable but under the um, uh, uh, what is called the trigger law um, it's, it's a class C felony Well, we're, our office is not vested with the original criminal jurisdiction in most situations, so we wouldn't be faced with that issue. Do you think the law prevents both prosecutors from pursuing a woman who self-administers? It depends on the law, but the trigger law that I just mentioned is, is, is designed at the provide, is directed to the provider, as most of them are. Okay, thank you very much.